Hello and welcome back. Today is a special class. We are going to step into the lab where uh, Naveen and Abhineet have set up some experiments for you to see. Uh, those experiments uh, will concern Schillerian imaging and uh, particle image velocimetry experimental setup as well as uh, how to do the post processing for particle image velocimetry. We have been discussing uh, issues of uh, related to shadowgraphy and Schillerian in the last class. And um, I want to go over these two methods uh, just once more and I want to show you a few examples before we actually step into the lab. So in shadowgraphy, um, this is a very simple uh, setup uh, uh, schematic of a shadowgraphy using a point light source. So you have a point light source and you have a Schillerian object here. Now, this entire system is such that uh, these are transparent media, right? So, we please remember that we are talking about transparent systems. So, the differences uh, this Schillerian object creates uh, is off the refractive index in the system and these differences are very small compared to the overall background, not very high. Uh, we discussed that also last time, yet the differences are small. Even despite the fact they are small, they do affect the passage of light through this. So, this uh, ray for example, it shows you a small amount of refraction, maybe this is uh, a heated layer of gas that is rising above a slightly colder uh, ambient, uh, ambient gas and uh, this refracts the light and uh, it changes its direction. This is obviously a much, much exaggerated image, but once it changes the image, you have a screen at the end where the image data can be taken. Uh, this point source of light need not be always pointed, uh, it can be an extended source of light as well. In that case, this geometric optics diagrams that will change, but the overall idea remains the same that is the use of a shadow, okay. Much like what happens be, uh, when a solid body intercepts uh, a solid opaque, opaque body intercepts light, here also uh, you have a shadow that is cast. but this time uh, you have the passage of light through the transparent media and it is just that the passage of light is, is altered just, just a tiny bit uh, because of the Schillerian object. And uh, when you have that, uh, this is an example of a shadowgraphy uh, that we have done in our lab. So, this is a direct shadowgraphy image of a meniscus between oil and water and this is a rod that is going right through the two liquids the rod diameter is 10 mm just for a sense of the scale and this is uh, a visualization from our lab actually. And uh, uh, this was being done for uh, uh, understanding a particular phenomena called the rod climbing effect. But you can see that there is this, there are two fluids. So, this is the upper one is the fluid 1, the lower one is the fluid 2 uh, and there is a very small amount of difference between of refractive index between the two. But when you have the the meniscus, the interface is very clearly visible in this particular case, right. So, the interface can be clearly seen, deformations of the interface also can be clearly seen during the experiment, uh, which does provide qualitative uh, insight into the deformation, right. Now, uh, the only problem is these data cannot always be used for quantitative evaluation because in shadowgraphy, the relationship between the image and the object is not always one to one and uh, or not always, uh, 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 not always uh, that easily quantifiable. So, that is that creates a problem. So, the image is not always a conjugate of the object and hence uh, uh, these are not often used for highly quantitative uh, visualizations. The one that is most popular is called Schillerian. Now, in the last class, I discussed a setup using a parabolic mirror setup. Uh, I also said it is a Z type 2 mirror system. Uh, now, uh, it is the system need not always use a mirror, it can also use a lens. In this case, you see there is a point source of light. Uh, this point source of light uh, is uh, this light rays are going from here, they are getting collimated by the first lens that it is passing through. And then you have this Schillerian object here, which is creating these small differences in refractive index of the system. Again, a transparent system. And then you have uh, the second lens uh, in the path. So, this is lens 1 and this is lens 2. And uh, 
a second lens is being used to focus this uh, beam of uh, uh, beam of light to a to a point now what we do is we put some kind of an obstacle in this case a knife edge uh, usually the knife edge is actually a knife edge it can be a razor blade really a razor blade in that sense and it is placed in such a way that uh, the the path of light through this is altered so for example a light ray that is coming here it is intercepted by this razor blade and does not end up here so otherwise it would have traveled and that light ray is not able to travel whereas the light ray from the top is able to travel and this uh, fact that you are stopping some of the light from traveling creates these small optical differences at the screen and that those show up as uh, as a difference in topography that we'll see uh, a uh, difference in uh, grayscale values in the image now uh, this is an example uh, this is not the example that you will see in the lab demonstration which is why i wanted to show you this this is a schillerian visualization of a shock wave in a hypersonic flow over a conical uh, conical body with a blunt base now um, this visualization comes from Professor uh, Duvuri Subramaniam's lab at ISC in the aerospace department. And you can see this shock wave formation and the bow shock very clearly in the two cases. So, here you can show sh see this shock formation, right. So, there is a difference in the grayscale images in this background over here and let us say the grayscale here. So, the shock wave formation is very, very clearly seen. What is not uh, what you do not get is uh, data regarding the velocity field. So, these are not uh, quantitative in the same way that particle image velocimetry is, but you can use data from this uh, to visualize how the shock wave changes, etcetera, right. So, this is uh, that. Um, so, this is just to illustrate, for example, what. Uh, what you can uh, visualize. So, for example, important flow features like separation regions and localized jets can be inferred. Again, this image comes from Professor Dubury Subramaniam's lab at ISC. So, thank you, uh, Professor Dubury, for lending us this image. And you can see in this region you have uh, some uh, reformation and of separation of shock. You can see some features, and somebody who is very well qualified to interpret this can figure out what is really happening in the flow based on some of these images. Once again, uh, you do not get the quantitative oil area and velocity field in such a case though. Um, now, in the lab visit, what you will see is going to be a significant uh, amount of time being spent on particle image velocimetry. You will see the lab scale demonstration of uh, how Naveen has been able to collect this data and uh, then he will also to show you some of the analysis. I will just quickly go over that uh, once and uh, uh, here for example, this is the rod by the way which uh, uh, this is slightly different example from what he is going to show you, but in this case uh, this is also a particle image velocimetry analysis where there is a rotating rod and there are these uh, glass spheres that are suspended in the flow and they are uh, being captured through a high speed camera. So, we did not use uh, uh, a normal PIV camera, but we just use a high speed imaging and we were able to get uh, slow enough uh, changes between successive frames so that our analysis can be done. So, once you have a, a flow field like this, a video like this, you see it is necessary that the, the displacements between uh, between particles in a image pair be small in order for you to be able to calculate right. So, once you have that uh, this kind of a proper data you can use post processing which again uh, Naveen is going to show you in a lot of detail uh, how this post processing is done uh, you can get a time resolved velocity field. So, this is a time resolved velocity field there is a vorticity. So, this uh, this these are the vectors and then the vorticity was also calculated for these cases and this vorticity was plotted and that is what is the, the background. So, this is vorticity has been plotted here and uh, that is uh, the variation of that is what you saw with time ok. So, so uh, with that what we will do is we will step into the lab and uh, uh, where Abhinit and Naveen will show you uh, a real life uh, 
demonstration of these experimental techniques and uh, you will see uh, one possibility of how this is uh, how these techniques might be implemented. I want to again caution you once uh, that uh, there is uh, there can be de strong deviations from each exper one experimental case to another in which case there you might need changes in the hardware and the changes in the way data is being collected. Uh, it could be a change in the camera, it could be a change in one of the optical elements uh, or something else or even maybe the tracer. So, in each experimental case you have to evaluate your needs properly and I hope we have been able to capture some of the fundamental aspects of uh, flow field characterization, flow field visualization and that you now have sufficient knowledge in order to evaluate uh, which of these uh, uh, standard uh, techniques uh, can be can be used in your particular application and which uh, where you might need alterations. So, wherever you need alterations you should do the relevant calculations yourself and evaluate what exactly is the need. And uh, finally, um, this sort of uh, data processing is extremely useful for uh, many applications. I mean uh, the applications in fluid mechanics they abound, uh, they go all the way from micro scale fluid flow for example in lab on a chip devices uh, where uh, some of these visualization techniques are used uh, uh, extensively to much larger scale applications such as aerospace industry where you might have to look at shocks I sh that's that's exactly why I wanted to show you an example from aerospace uh, industry where the, we saw the hypersonic uh, shock waves uh, shock fronts in hypersonic flows so the applications of these are, are tremendous and and very varied and uh, that is why it is very very important that you evaluate your own case uh, uh, properly before utilizing or before designing your setup so, with this I will end and uh, let us go into the lab. So, yeah, I will see you soon. Thanks.